victorious Indiana State Sycamores are with us. They have a date tomorrow in the semifinals, 2.30 against number one seeded Bradley. Head coach Josh Schertz is in the middle. Student athletes include Cameron Henry and Cooper Neese. We're gonna ask Josh to make a statement on the game that just finished and then we'll go to questions for all three of the Sycamores on the dais. Josh, please. Well, obviously, um, first, uh, just credit Belmont and uh, that was as, you know, right up there with a Final Four game in 2016, two best games I've ever been a part of. And I was, you know, just kind of like a spectator watching. Um, the, the shot making both ways, um, you know, was, was incredible. Obviously, uh, Coop was, you know, only eight for eight in the second half. So um, should have gotten the ball more, I guess. Uh, and, and, you know, Shepard and those guys making shots and both teams just play after play after play. and, and um, Competitive will on both sides was amazing. It was uh, it was just really a, a joy to be a part of the game, and and uh, you know obviously uh, we came out on top, and and uh, I think this team all year um, you know has had a a great resilience about it. Um, you know I don't know that we've always they've always gotten the respect they deserve from people in terms of. You know, when people talk about the best teams in the Valley and all that stuff, I don't know that Indiana State's the tip of anybody's tongue, but, you know, I know uh, in that locker room we got a lot of competitors. We got a lot of guys that, you know, uh, we got some warriors in there, and, and I go to, you know, go to battle with these guys any day of the week. So um, great game both ways. Belmont was amazing. Uh, we happened to make one more play, and, you know, again, credit to our guys for coming up with a stop. Questions? Oh, start right here on the end. Thank you. And then we'll go number two here. Cooper, most people will look at the nine threes, but in that second half as well, you had to get inside of the arc, made a couple of very tough opportunities, tough conversions there. At what point did you sense things may be starting to shift personally for you? What were you seeing differently perhaps from the other side defensively? Yeah, um, you know, they, they switched up and put Ben on me there after about the second or third three I hit in the second half, um, you know, and I knew I had to kind of switch a little bit up, get my movement, you know, whether it was cutting or moving with the ball, without the ball, uh, just to kind of free myself up for, you know, for some shots when they're going in like that. Uh, you know, it would be selfish not to take some. So, uh, you know, my teammates got me open, you know, communicated with me extremely well and uh, got me in the right position to take those shots. So it's all kudos to them. It's, it's them getting me uh, to my favorite spots, so. Excuse me, uh, questions for Cameron. Cameron, you had a pretty uh, good all-around game, 25 points, I believe, uh, seven rebounds, eight assists. Uh, talk about, you know, obviously did a lot of your scoring in the first half and a lot of all-around play in the second half. What's going through your mind out there just in those different situations about what you need to do to help the team win? Um, Belmont, they're, they're really good, but they don't have a lot of paint presence when they go small ball. And, you know, my teammates were just giving me the ball in the paint and just letting me do my thing in the post. and. They're just spacing now. I got shooters across the across the court, so it's hard to help off of. And one on one with me in the post with a guy a little smaller than me is is kind of a little easier for me. So just them, I just credit my teammate just giving me the ball and just believing in me. And then on the offensive rebounding and the defensive rebounding, I knew we just had to get extra possessions or finish possessions. And then the assist came easy when when Coop's hitting like that. I mean, there's nothing I I just got to give him the ball and just let him shoot. So Cooper, you guys. <clears throat> We're going to shoot out today. A lot of points, a lot of up and down, a lot of um, a lot of pace today. Today's game in the closing in the closing five minutes. So you have Cam come in there, have some help side defense to force a steal down low, and then uh, a couple minutes later, uh, as the shot clock was uh, expiring, he blocked uh, Davidson's shot. Mm -hmm. What was that like to see? You know, get a couple of stops, right? Because you have one or two right there, and that could be the decider in that game. Yeah, well, you know, both coaches on side of the ball probably hate the final score. Uh, that means you know you're not playing much defense. But um, but no, like you said, you've got to be able to make plays when they matter the most. Um, you know, and Voss had a great wall up over there on Davidson. Cam even came over and helped. And um, you know, instead of a wide open layup, you know, they make him have to force it and kind of get it. Up out behind his head and then throw it up uh, for kind of a prayer. So, I mean, that, that's the high, high IQ, intelligent play. Uh, that's a winning play. You know, you want to talk about things that help us win games. I mean, you can go down the other side and hit your free throws and it'd be a winning play. You can go down and make a bucket, be a winning play, but none more bigger than that one right there. So, And then Cam, last one for me. You <clears throat> were able to, uh, uh, this is a team that's really balanced. All five starters can defend, can score, can pass, can, can do a little bit of everything. Um, and then you look at a guy like Cooper all year. He's been taking a backseat, like Coach has been saying, and, and kind of letting the guys kind of find that balance and find that rhythm, get those wins. 
Um, but and then a night like tonight where he doesn't miss in that second half and just explodes. What's it like to see him kind of come out as a senior and uh, in this spot where you know maybe he didn't get a, a postseason accolade, but you know he's in this spot uh, shining here at Arch Madness. Well, that night at the award show, when when his name wasn't called for any award, Coop's the kind of guy he thinks the opposite way. He's thinking I'm gonna come in and show him why I should have deserved the award. And I credit him for keeping his head up all year. You know, he went he had games where he couldn't make a shot, and he had games where he can't miss. But we just tell him to keep shooting, keep having confidence, because when he makes one, he might make nine in a row. And he's one of the best shooters I've been around, just played around. And his just him being verbal on the court to me is everything I need, man. Uh, I miss those free throws, next play. You know, and then he's keeping my head up, keeping my confidence up, and we do the same. And it's just when he's, when he's going like that, he's the best shooter in the conference, easily. All right, we're on the right-hand side. We're on the third row and then the second row. Go, please. Coach, you, just, you guys just finished a game where you played 70 possessions. How tough of an adjustment tomorrow do you think it'll be playing a team like Bradley who likes to play a little slower than the game you guys just played? Probably be a good thing with how tired we are. So probably be glad that they're going to play it slow. Uh, you know, every game is is different in terms of the challenges. I think you know we've played Belmont twice, and they've both been similar games. It was 89, 88 there, and you know 94, 91 here. And um, you look at every offensive metric. I think you know we're one and two in the league in every offensive metric. And um, but tomorrow's game is a totally different challenge. You know, uh, Bradley presents uh, obviously their their. Uh, Unbelievable on both sides of the, of the ball. They probably don't get enough credit for how good they are defensively, um, you know, uh, and I'm sorry, offensively. Uh, everybody talks about their defense, which is exceptional, but, um, you know, they were the number one team in the league in offensive efficiency. So they, they while they don't play fast, uh, they're very efficient with how they play. So um, we'll have to recover quickly. Um, guys, we had a logged a lot of minutes today, third game in three days, but. You know, this is this is the best time of year. This is this is what you want. You want these opportunities, and you know, you don't. You know, we didn't come this far to come this far. You know, like we're, we got to get ready for our next opportunity, and and we got a huge challenge tomorrow. But I know, I send the radio. Uh, these guys like big challenges. Um, they they like these opportunities uh, to play against the best and challenge themselves and test themselves. And um, you know, uh, we've got an unbelievable challenge tomorrow. But I I know we're not gonna we're not running from that. One for Cam and Coop. Uh, Cam, you haven't hidden from it. You know, you called it basically the re revenge tour. You know, you wanted to face everybody that, you know, beat Indiana mm -hmm. State this year. You got your first wish crossing off Belmont. You get Bradley tomorrow. Just how excited are you to finally be playing on a Saturday here? Cameron, um, you go first, then we'll come to Cooper. I'm excited to be here. You know, a lot of teams, you know, we had a lot of upsets this year that we control, that we, it's, it was us versus us. And just coming into this tournament, everything starts fresh. You know, you got to let the past be the past. And we're just looking, we're looking ahead to the next game. And it's, it's, it's so easy to have guys on the team like <coughs> Calix that doesn't really get in, but he's the loudest one on the side. He's the loudest one in the huddle. He's telling us it's time to get a stop. It's time to get a stop. And I love that about teammates like that, that pick you up, that don't even, log any minutes. They're just here. They're, they're, they're great teammates to have. And I can't wait to play tomorrow. I, I played 40 today, and I'm ready to go another 40 tomorrow. So we're going to be ready. Coop, uh, you know, this is your sixth run for this bad boy, and mm -hmm. you finally got two wins in St. Louis. You know, you and the rest of the senior class just talk about how great of a feeling that is to pick up two wins here at Arch Madison. Yeah, it feels good, um, you know. But I, I can say is collectively, um, you know, mo to most of the media, you know, this game – you know, means a lot, but you know, it's over with now. Uh, you know, we didn't come here to win two games. We came here to win four. Um, you know, to me, in my eye, this game's over with, and now our focus is on Bradley. Uh, and for that third game, you know, you take it one at a time. You're one, one and zero each each day, and you're going to get exactly what you want. So, um, you know, more than thrilled to win a game like we did today, but also know that our focus shifts over to Bradley now. So, we have three minutes to go. We have three questions up. One here, two on the other side. Go, please. Questions for Coach. Uh, congratulations on the win first off. Thank you. And then when you look at everything that happened from the first half to the second half, I mean, some very key players from Belmont, a great team they are. Tyson in the 24. And Shepard, you held him in check for a little bit, but he got his with 19. Uh, just take us through the defensive adjustments you made in that second half today. Well, you know, the, what happened to us the first game, you know, we were up 11, and they, you know, the way we were guarding them, uh, they had to take their five men out, bronze, and, and take all their fives out and play basically with five guards. They slid Freiburg to the five, and uh, that really hurt us in Nashville. It turned the game. We were up 11 with five and a half to play, and we really struggled to guard them. They're 
really difficult to guard when they play with the small five. Uh, and so <clears throat> we had some things, you know, we, we, we talked about it a lot. Uh, you know, and we guarded it a couple of days, Tuesday, Wednesday, when we were working for Evansville. We did a little bit of segments on that. And then, you know, obviously that was the focus because we knew when they had the bigs in how we were going to play. I think we were up 13 with 10 or 11 minutes to play, and they went and took the five out again and, and played small the rest of the way. And, um, it's challenging. Um, Jude did a great job on Shepard. He's he's an elite player. I mean, he's, um, you know, he to me, he's the most dynamic scorer in the league. I, Tucker's a great player. We've got a lot of great players in the league, but nobody scores it like Ben Shepard. And uh, he was he was fantastic. You know, he had, you know, a lot of times we, we were contesting and making him tough. He banked one in. He hit, you know, some really tough ones. Um, and, and then, you know, we were trying to switch some stuff. And, and really, we downsized. Uh, we tried to start originally keeping, you know, Kate in and Robbie in. Um, but we just were not, we're not able to uh, take advantage in the post uh, against Freiburg. And so we were, we were really not having any advantages offensively and creating disadvantage shells defensively. When we went small with Jabo in there and we went with our small ball lineup, I thought we guarded them the best and it gave us the best in terms of offensive spacing and opportunity to attack them and try to downsize and just hope our small guys are better than their small guys. Final two questions are on this side of the room. Go, please. Coach, you've referenced tomorrow, obviously, being a matter of digging deep. Frenetic pace today. You forced 16 turnovers as a squad. What can you take from that entering tomorrow against the top seed? Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's, you're going to have to, it's a totally different challenge, you know, where, where Bradley is, is, you know, you see today, you know, uh, rink mast and, you know, where, where Belmont, you know, doesn't throw the ball on the post. They do most of their, their, their game is threes and cutting and, and driving and, and really perimeter centric. Uh, Bradley is, you know, everything revolves around mass and they play inside out. So uh, while Robbie and Caden get a ton of minutes today, they're going to be incredibly valuable tomorrow. We're going to have to be at our best uh, trying to guard those guys. And then, you know, of course, uh, you know, being able to play and, and take away, they have a, a lot of pieces. I mean, they're not, they didn't win the league by accident. They've got, you know, guys who can make shots. They've got guys who can close our game. I think we led 10 in the second half and, um, you know, we, we did something self-inflicted and then credit them. They were fantastic on the stretch. Zeke Montgomery, I think, scored 18 points second half and hit a couple of unbelievable shots down the stretch and, and they, that was our worst loss of the year. I think we lost by 11. Um, it was a close game in the final minute and a half, but lost by 11 at home. So um, we know how good they are. Got great respect for them and we'll have to be at our best tomorrow and, and, and we're looking forward to the challenge, uh, you know, and, and see what we can do. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Good luck tomorrow. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. No, I'm good. Yeah.
Belmont Bruins are with us now. Head coach Casey Alexander is flanked by Cave Tyson and Ben Shepard. We're going to ask uh, Casey to make a statement on the game. Then we'll go to questions for all three of the Bruins up here on the dais. Casey, please. <clears throat> Tough one, obviously. Um, congratulations to Indiana State. They were really good and really hard to guard. You know, I don't know. I don't know who would be the generals and who would be the Globetrotters, but they ought to pay us to play each other because the two games in the last week um, were pretty phenomenal, um, both coming down to the last possession like that. Um, give them a lot of credit. They make a lot of plays. Uh, you know, for Nice to go 9 for 11 from 3, for their team to go 20, 16 for 28 from 3, um, for them to score 94 points, and for us to have a chance to win says a lot about our team, the character of our team, these two guys especially. Um, <clears throat> so I'm really proud of them. I'm proud of the way that we fought. Um, we tried a lot of things defensively. Had to go really unconventional route um, late in the game and just went small and stayed with it. We didn't sub for hardly the last 10 minutes, maybe one time we subbed. And so gave ourselves a chance, which is what this team and what this program's about. And um, we're proud of that. We're disappointed, but we'll play. We'll be ready next time, whenever that is. Questions? Start right over there. Thank you. Uh, Coach, obviously a really good game for Cooper Nice on the other side for Indiana State, nine threes. Uh, just talk about him as a player and how tough it is to, to guard him and what was the game plan throughout the game? Yeah, he's been playing really well before tonight. You know, his last three or four games, uh, he's really emerged. Obviously a sixth-year guy and an all-conference guy and the experience that he has, you know, we, we, we knew what he was capable of and he has played at a really high level before tonight. and. Um, you know, but tonight was even a, a notch better, you know, and it's really kind of what's required sometimes in games like this. And um, we didn't lose him very much. You know, he, he shot, he had several of those makes were from really deep, um, not used to guarding out there and contesting shots from that range. And uh, he made one where I thought Freiburg actually fouled him. He got up under him and, you know, we contested as well as we can. And he made that one. And so you just tip your hat. But, you know, they had other guys. I mean, um, you know, Henry had 18 points, four, four rebounds and four assists at the half. Uh, you know, and Bledson had two, was two for two at the half. And so a lot of guys made plays for them uh, beyond Cooper, but he was, he was phenomenal. We'll go right here, and then we'll have the microphone in front of you. Thank you. Uh, Coach, talk about the uh, resilience of your team getting down nine or ten points, uh, starting the second half, being able to fight back. Uh, talk a little bit about that and how, you know, that's a you – know, quality or a trait that you know probably not easy to find in most young guys well yeah I don't, you don't ever draw it up that way <laughs> you know and um you know in our game last week we we're down 19 to them in the first half and, and came back and won the game and so you know they they made that run on us and it was more than nine or ten i think it was closer to 13 14 in there at some point and um but again I, you know it's it's really i think it speaks to the character of our players the character of our program the expectations um of belmont and and uh, a habit of winning, uh, that they, um, they never lost sight of what we were here for, what we could do. Um, and really phenomenal for them just to hang with it. I mean, you know, Ben uh, was in foul trouble the first half and had, you know, had a hard time getting going, but he made some really high level plays late. Kay gets a career high. You know, we, we had Keyshawn Davidson was aggressive from start to finish. You know, we had a lot of guys that made great contributions and Jacoby Gillespie, another true freshman that had, a, had good moments. And so, again, in the same way that Cooper had the day that he had, we had guys that really rose up uh, to the occasion and gave us a chance to win the game. You know, we, we we're down, <clears throat> I may not get it exactly right, but we're up one uh, with a loose, they throw one in the backcourt, Ben chases it down with a great effort. Um, he makes uh, a pass to Jacoby Gillespie, who's got a lane to drive. Cooper Nees challenges him at the rim. We don't get a clean look. It doesn't go in. We've got rebounding numbers, but the ball bounces the other way. And then he comes down and makes one from the logo. Uh, and so, you know, sometimes a game, you know, it's crazy. There's a lot of game plays in the game, obviously, but that, that was a pretty big swing right there. Okay, you guys shot well above 50% in the second half. How frustrating was it to try to make the rally when they were just dropping in threes seemingly every other possession? Um, yeah, it was pretty frustrating, but you try not to really think about it in the game. You just try and win every possession, as coaches taught us all year. So try to win defensive end and offensive end. Ben, obviously not the way you wanted today to go. How are you going to remember this team and the effort that they had all season long? Um, it hurts a lot, but um, 
I told the guys in there before I came in here, this is my favorite year at Belmont uh, in the Valley. There's so many memories with these guys and uh, it hurts, but when I look back on this year, it's just a lot of good things. And um, I love these guys, I love the staff, I love the program so much it hurts leaving, but uh, yeah, I feel like I left it all out there, so. Just, you've set such a bar here and this season too. You're pretty confident about what the guys next to you and the rest of the program will do in this league moving forward? Yeah, I think the program's in good hands with the, the freshmen coming up and coach right here. And um, yeah, I think the future's bright in the Valley. I know Belmont's a winning program and this isn't usually something that happens losing the quarterfinals, but um, yeah, we're optimistic for the future. And I know that Belmont's always gonna be a stable program, so. On the right-hand side, gentlemen. Uh, you know, Cade, obviously Ben just mentioned the future of Belmont. Obviously a young player here. What was your experience like, you know, at Arch Madness? How are you going to build on that uh, in the coming of years here at St. Louis? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I loved it here. I thought it was very professional, and, you know, I had a great time with my teammates. You know, the people you're with really makes it special. So just to be able to experience something new with the guys I've been with all, all summer, you know, all year. Just boys that I love, so it's been special. Back here, thank you. One more for Casey, just for the, the team in general, beyond just today. I mean, this was the 11th game in 32 that went down to legitimately the final shot. To battle through that all year, to win 20 games again, how proud are you of the season? Yeah, very proud. Um, you know, not. not <clears throat> not excited that we're finished, you know, and I wish we could have played longer. Um, but with the perspective of big picture, um, this team, with all the questions that we had coming into the season, um, with our own roster and turnover and new faces and everything else, and then being thrust into a great league uh, that we had no familiarity with, literally, virtually no preparation for, uh, as far as recruiting cycles and things like that, you know, and and we get off to a tough start. Um, we have a we have a Keyshawn Davidson injury that really set us back early, um, and 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 lengthened our you know our ability to to get back to where we wanted to be. And then, but then to go through, you know, I think halfway through league play, we were in tie for first, maybe a couple of games ahead, and you know we end up winning twenty whatever ga twenty games, twenty one games. I don't know what it was, but um, for. 13th straight season and you know so there's there's so much for this team to be proud of uh, individually collectively and um and, and you know and, and we've got a much better perspective of where we need to go i mean we're not we we clearly have improvements to make and we understand that and we'll be determined to do so we're we're grateful to be at a place where we've got everything we need uh, to be the best team in the missouri valley conference over time uh, we weren't this year but but we've got everything that we need um, to get where we want to go and we'll we'll get there sooner rather than later Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Best of luck in that future.